Why, hello there. Hello, everyone. Paul Tranny here with the one and only Shanti Sparrow. She's right here. She's next to me. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Great to be here, guys. How awesome. Are you all? Good. Good to have you here. Love your artwork in the background. I'm happy Thank to you. have you back, actually. You have were live streaming with us before, yes? Yeah, in February, I got to do the first edition of the Music Mag that today we get to extend, which is really fun. Oh, nice. So like the second edition? Yeah, issue number two. Awesome. Uh, Vanessa is giving us tons of rock signs. Easy there. That's right. <laughs> but that's cool. It's good to have you here, uh, Vanessa and Donna and Cornell. James, what's up, everybody? Good to have you here, Shanti. I'm glad we're going to do some, some good old graphic design. Yeah. Some good sure. old fashioned graphic design. <laughs> I'm into it. Not old yeah. fashioned, but you know what? It all starts, it all boils down to the design fundamentals. Absolutely. And I'm sure that's going to probably come up for the next yeah. couple of days. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm a teacher. I love um, teaching the basics and getting people into this wonderful industry. I'm so lucky to be a part of. So oh. let's go with the basics. Into it. Love it. And uh, when things get screwed up, it's kind of like, okay, I got I to gotta check, see where the basics are at. Like, what am I missing? Um, yeah. But anyways, speaking of basics and really uh, what we need to be doing right now is just kind of talk about a schedule. Thank you to everybody who's been streaming today. Uh, we did logo design actually at the very beginning of the day, which was cool with Alex. So that's available. Daily Creative Challenge, photo retouching with Eric, Aaron Nace. Uh, had an Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. And then we have you for two hours, which is great. And then we'll get into XD after this. Just basically a full day of designing. Um, doesn't really matter what app you're in if you're not like adhering to the fundamentals of design, right? Then it's probably not gonna. It's not yeah, gonna be working, I mean, right? I mean, we're working in Illustrator in Design, but they apply everywhere. All these decisions. Yeah, very cool. Into it. Well, cool. I don't want to take up any more time. You guys have the schedule here. I'm gonna just kind of switch over to Shanti to your screen if I could, and you could kind of tell us what we're gonna do for the day. Absolutely. I mean, I, I might just really quickly introduce myself for anybody who doesn't know me. Um, and, and off the top, also just recognize that we're all in a really difficult time uh, right now. And I'm sure you guys are all at varying levels of OK. And I just want to, you know, say that I'm very grateful to be here and, you know, share your wonderful space and spend some time with you all. Um, a really great design friend of mine, Sydney Lagori, he's actually in the, the chat right now, did a wonderful reminder that what we do as designers and teachers is so important um, because we, we have skills to communicate to everybody. And right now it's so great that we can empower people to maybe communicate more and communicate and amplify their, their messages. So just wanted to, to recognize that. Um, but I will definitely just go into my folio and tell you a little bit about who and, and who I am and what I do. So I'm Australian. You might have been able to tell just from my accent. I'm a designer and educator here in NYC. I'm going to scroll through. Um, as you see things that maybe you want me to look at in the forum, if you, you have a special request, I'll go into it, but I'll just give you the general outlook. Um, started in non-for-profit, campaign, appeal designs, I mean, you can generally see already that I like color. I like big, bold communication. Um, I moved into uh, event spaces. And I think I said last time that for me, doing event branding is so special because it's like a limited edition visual identity. It only exists for that time that you can experience it. So I love doing these events, especially community events that help out the neighborhood. Editorial, packaging all of this sort of stuff, um, lots of fun. I think I might only really show one work with a little bit more detail, which is the recent uh, grad show that I got to design. Uh, this was for the, the class that um, graduated through through lockdown. And normally the Shillington grads are very much, you know, champagne and tears and hugs and all of that sort of stuff. And it was a really great design problem to try and solve to set up an identity that made everybody feel connected. So this is pretty simply, you know, all of us in our little boxes creating our fireworks and 
amazing sparks of imagination and creativity. And we may be alone in these, our little boxes, but we're part of a greater picture. So making sure that throughout it, everything connected. So even on the website, getting those thumbnails to be connected. And I think my favorite part of this is actually the, the inaugural uh, class screenshot, which was a little oh, nice. unusual. <laughs> that Where, is cool. uh, yeah, so normally you get the class photo. We couldn't quite do that, but giving Zoom backgrounds and all of that sort of stuff helped to make them part of part of that big picture and that identity and look at all of their gorgeous smiling faces. Yeah. So very, very mm -hmm. proud of that class. It's very cool. I'd love to, like, when we get into it, I'd love to see how you kind of pick colors and how you go through that process. Just to Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, color is one of basically my favorite, maybe, design element. Yeah. Um, just another side, side of me is illustration. We're not going to be doing this kind of illustration today, but I definitely do lots of children's book illustrations. I was lucky enough to have a collaboration with American Tourister and make some luggage and once upon yeah, then that's led cool. to publishing. So I've got kids books around the place with that zero plus age bracket. Warning, this is Archie. He's the love of my life. Um, <laughs> and he's currently wandering around my feet. So if you hear tippy taps or like almost gremlin noises snacking, that's him. Hope <laughs> maybe he'll make it through it. I'm sure everybody will love that. That's cool. <laughs> all right. Well, that's that's pretty Cute. much all I'm going to show on me, and you guys can have a look. Yeah, um, feel free. Just uh, uh, more housekeeping. Um, they can everybody. You can get to Shanti's uh, Be Challenge tab, and uh, we will be reviewing the Daily Creative Challenge today in an hour and a half. So uh, awesome. be ready for that. That's from Andrew's segment that just ended. Nice, looking forward to it. Uh, okay, so this is the brief, I'll just jump into it now. And we've sort of already talked about what we're, we're going towards. Uh, for those who didn't join us, it's okay. You don't really need to know the past one. I'll, I'll quickly just show it, which was Woodstock. And we got to do uh, our version of psychedelic illustrations for this editorial. And of course, we're going to do issue number two. And I think it's already given away, especially with all of these going on in the forum. Um, we are doing glam rock, which is a very specific time period and really, really fun. And, you know, I've chosen it because of its vibrancy. But if you guys are, you know, playing at home and, and you plan to follow along, you don't have to pick glam rock at all. Pick anything. Uh, one of my favorite things of doing this last time was people sending me their variations on the brief that we did and they were incredible and so I'd love to see them if you go and do something. So what we're going to be learning within this like next couple of days is as we sort of talked about already using simple tools and techniques to create 70 styles illustrations. So the basic tools in uh, Illustrator are so powerful and you can create beautiful, beautiful. They can come back to these and, and have fun with them. So it's going to be the glam rock issue. We know that it's going to be 16 pages. I picked letter purely because historically zines are always on a budget and standard sizes really help. Uh, you can do a lot creatively within a standard size. The article is children of the revolution, how glam rock changed the world by Mark Elliott. Originally published October 17, 2019 on youdiscovermusic.com. So if you want to read ahead and find out more about this glam rock world, go for it. General plan. So we've got day one. So today we're going to be looking at Illustrator. We'll be an Illustrator pretty much the whole time. Uh, the key learn learning moments, I hope, are going to be how to continue a design series. Uh, referencing and evolving historic references, um, creating illustrations from photographs, working with patterns, working with colors, maybe type package creation, some type editing. And then tomorrow it's all InDesign. We love InDesign. So there we're going to be looking at type pairing, redefining and editing paragraph styles, pacing, type finesse, and if we get time, maybe a little bit of presentation. Very cool. Thank you for being so organized, by the way. I just really oh. appreciate this. <laughs> spending time on this and uh, 
means a lot to myself and everyone here, so thank you. Oh, that's okay. No, I'm so happy to. I think it's a teacher reflex. Like, what are these, you know, key learning moments that we need to achieve? So I've gone last time about my research phase. And when it comes to research of a project, you can deep dive, you can shallow dive. It's okay. Just do, do what you feel like. On this one, I went on a, I would say a medium dive and looked at glam rock and the glam rockers themselves. Uh, what a spectacle these, these are. So we've got David Bowie, got Roxy, Slade. I never, I had never heard of Slade, but yeah. very, very I don't even, uh, who's Roxy? I don't know Roxy. Roxy Music? I mean, maybe Oh, Roxy can... Music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, gotcha. uh, I think his name's Brian Ferry. Oh, see, okay, very quickly, I am not very good with too much music info. And for me, these are actually me learning about the genre as opposed to pre-knowing. Yeah. So, I mean, if somebody in the forum knows bunches of information wow. or fun facts, please let us know. Fun, fun fact, Brian Eno and Brian Ferry were both in Roxy Music. Oh, double Brian's. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Feel free. Give us your own little uh, glam tips that you might have or tidbits of info. Oh, absolutely. Uh, later on, we will be looking at uh, illustrating either David Bowie or Elton John up front. So if you guys have a preference of who I illustrate, maybe let that be known in the forum. Okay, so we've got Bowie or Ziggy Stardust at this time. So we're looking at this time period between 1970 and 1975. So there was this glam era that also happened in the 80s with uh, metal. And that's when you got Motley Crue and all of that sort of thing. But we're, we're going you know, more to the UK side, uh, the, the start of it. So Ziggy Stardust, Brian Ferry from Roxy Music, Slade Sweet, Alice Cooper and Elton John. When I'm looking at this research stuff, what I'm trying to do is look for those visual cues again. So what can I see? What connections can I make that I can take into my design? And I think one of the first things that you can look at, and speaking of how I choose my colors, is color palette. So I'm seeing lots of repetition of the reds. I'm seeing blues. I'm seeing pinks. I'm definitely seeing golds happening around the place. There's also patterns that are turning up. So we're getting interesting black and white patterns lots of spots, sort of tiger stripes, uh, and also lots of patterns here. So that gives me an indicator of maybe I will look into pattern use. Maybe I will look into, you know, red, blue, gold, black, white, uh, pink, and that can form my palette. Yeah. Um, another thing to note is that this genre, it, there's tones of androgyny and, and really fun stuff in it, but some like a major things is the spectacle of it. It's, it's the costuming. So I really want to focus on these costumes coming to the forefront in, in my design. So another little bit of research that I like to do is just error research. So this isn't about glam rock necessarily. It's not about music even. It's just about within the seventies, what design was around. And the seventies was wild and varied and you can put 70s design into Google and you're going to get so much. I found these references and I think because of the color, I zoned in, especially down here where we've got this blue, yellow, red, black, white going on. Um, it really, really spoke to me considering it connected to the costuming colors that were coming through. Very vectory, uh, stripes, squares, Love pattern it. usage. Uh, the, the type's pretty Swiss, you know? It's got lots of white space around it, a nice, clean, neutral sort of sans serif when it comes to body copy, at least. They do have more fun with the displays, as you can see. So that sort of opens it up for us to have some more fun with our displays. Oh, so there's a few lessons to take from that. And then that'll help me make choices as I keep going. Yeah, that's good. I like that because you're you're doing all this work. Even when we were looking at your portfolio, I was like, where where did these designs come from? Where's this stuff come from? Absolutely. Like it's kind of like you 
you might focus on an idea and then do research around that idea. So uh, you're not drawing necessarily from a blank page, you're drawing from all of this uh, research that you've done, which is cool. Yeah, I, I think I've very rarely been able to start or finish a job without doing just at bare minimum contextual research around it or competitive research. And I know that you guys learned a little bit of mood boarding with Kathleen earlier. You know, this is historical research mood boarding, but you know, mood boarding helps me so uh, clarify my thinking so much in my, my process. Okay, so we're getting to planning and then we'll jump into Illustrator. So this is one of the lessons or the key learning moments that I wanted to focus on. So we have here uh, a precedent board. So this is the last magazine we made. And I think so often we create a beautiful foundation in a design and we leave it as a one-off. So I think it's a really good lesson to go back and figure out how can you, you know, extend that series and build upon something and make it an even stronger body of work. So we're going to make sure we keep the good and then make sure that we innovate it and change it enough so that we can uh, definitely, you know, uh, keep it fresh. So the things that I'm thinking about keeping are the body copy styling. Uh, we've got like neutral sort of font here that uh, is nice and Swiss. So it makes sense and ties back to our mood board. We've got the grid here. So the grid is that unsung hero behind every single design. And I wanna make sure that we've got that underlying grid, keeping one magazine to the next magazine connected. Page furniture, and by that I mean all the little details on the sides, so page numbers, the navigation numbers, maybe you've got some credits in there, issues. Those things there really, really help people connect. And the cover footer, which is sort of a weird term that I've definitely made up. Um, we're going to keep up the issue number, the titling down here in the bottom, but that's about it from the cover that we're going to keep. What we will change is the colors. These colors are awesome. I loved playing with them and they were so versatile, but they're not right for what we're about to do in glam rock. I need something more vibrant and a little bit more electric. And we're gonna get rid of these colors. The illustration style, well, we've just done that, that mood board and I think we need to change it up. The masthead, which is very specific, in that font, we're going to change over to something a bit more 70s. And when I say heading fonts, I'm talking about within the typesetting. So this Cooper, not quite the right error, so we're going to find something new. So if you're doing this with any project, I really recommend writing a list, the simple list of, you know, what's good and what you should keep and maybe what you should change every time. And then they become your rules and it becomes easier to keep going. All right. Looks good. You're yes. doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, so we've got read the content. I know it's a really simple thing to say, uh, but it's, you know, the first thing that you have to do is make sure you understand the story that you're storytelling visually. So uh, before you can, I often do get asked, how can you uh, thumbnail when you don't how much don't know how much room the type is going to take up. Simple trick: uh, run it all out onto you know whatever page your document's going to be on. So for me, it was a letter size. Put it at a body copy font size, so nine or ten in Arial, Helvetica. It doesn't really matter, and and just run it through in multiple columns because what will happen is you will see the physical space it's about to take up. And as you read and mark up, you're going to find natural spaces where the content, you know, has a clear cut that maybe it makes sense to move on to the next page. So you can see I'm sort of marking page breaks where I think we can move on and move the content down. I'm also marking things that I want to blow up. So uh, pull quotes, maybe the intro. And then once again, like in those other uh, mood boards, I'm looking for those visual, visual visual cues. And that comes through in writing as well. 
So splash of colour you can see written here, spectacle of identities, spectacle, spectacle of costume, uh, flamboyance. So I'm, I'm writing down ideas to myself about vibrant colours. Maybe I should look at the costumes, so makeup and platform shoes. Uh, ideas about the stage persona and being in the spotlight. So there are two things that I can definitely bring to this. Um, you know, boots and braces and glitters. So making the platform boots come in more and more. It's also telling me who we're talking about in each page. So I can write a list and know how many people I'm going to be illustrating. And, you know, that, that starts me off on my process. And my thumbnails. <laughs> so this is just another public display as I have so many that I cannot sketch and I cannot draw and that is okay. So um, I'm, I'm definitely an illustrator who's, who's not particularly gifted with sketching but it does, what, what you're doing is making a rough plan and you can really really quickly figure that out on paper. I've kept my copy pretty similar to my previous magazine so the, the Woodstock edition and just trying to figure out how I can work in these new illustrations we're about to bank a whole bunch of copy to the right, maybe to mirror that. Perhaps I put a shape behind the figure to help anchor it to the page. So likewise, I'm trying to figure out what, how I could continue that on the Bowie spread. And I'm also, I'm not just going type picture, type picture and changing it up and maybe having a whole spread in the center. I really enjoy having a really interesting center spread. So. Elton, I think, yeah. is going to be our, our stellar star. Nice. Yeah. Are you going? Now. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I'm going to grab the photos and then I'm going to illustrate them. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're going to make Sweet. them our own. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Oh, well, right now, that's it. That's what we're about to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good prompt. Okay. So we're going to jump into Illustrator. Actually, I might quickly just look at our images. So I've tried to credit them where possible. And, you know, because this is an educational thing, I'm not really selling them. It's okay to play with these uh, as they are. But I definitely want to give credit to these, these photographers as we go. Um, just be aware that, you know, don't go and sell all this sort of stuff. It's not yours. You have to go and ask nice permission from these photographers. But in terms of picking the images that you're going to illustrate, especially in this minimal style that we're going to do together, I suggest that you look at silhouettes. Silhouettes, like nice, clean silhouettes are really gonna help you. So uh, these like amazing poses and oh my God, incredible uh, costume. Did we get any responses for whether we wanted the uh, Elton or Bowie popping in? Was there any preferences? Uh, people said Bowie, mostly. <laughs> All right, let's go with that. Okay, so I'm going to create new. I'm going to go with letter just to match the, the size that it's going to output, even though we're not going to make the layout in here. We're just going to make the illustrator, um, the assets, sorry. So I'm going to go create more settings. <laughs> Because this is going to have an online output, I'm not actually intending on printing this. I'm going with RGB. So let's create that document. Okay, perfect. So we're going to bring in old Bowie. And resize him to our page. Shanti, don't you have an outfit like that, just like that in your closet? I'm wearing it right no. now. You, you just are. Can't. It's under Is the it not the, that was the, <laughs> those are like serious bell bottoms or whatever uh, you want to call it's, them. It's honestly amazing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when you talk about silhouettes, there's not much better than this. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, I'm just sizing it to roughly sit on my canvas like this. You don't have to be too exact. And if you, you know, uh you can use illustrator obviously like it's an open canvas it doesn't need to sit within the page size so i'm going to just lock bowie in on this layer actually let me go full screen because i'm sure that's annoying to not see it and then we're going to add 
another layer. So let's name this reference. Let's name this art. Just keeping it organized so that we know what's going on. Uh, there are plenty of ways to approach this. So I suggest, because we're going to be using the pen tool a fair amount today. If the pen tool's not your friend yet, that's okay. You can do a lot of the working out in terms of the shapes that you're going to make on paper. So get tracing, you know, tracing paper and, and work that out for yourself. Uh, for me, I'm actually a little faster with the pen tool than I am with an actual pen. So I'm gonna do my working out of the shapes straight onto the photograph and using that as my reference. Nice. Um, and when you're working, I, I don't know if it matters now, but are you working in, are, if you're designing for print, are you working in CMYK? Yeah, I, you should, if you're working, uh, if you're designing for print, because I'm doing the, the online theme, it's RGB. So I'm going to be working with more electric colors. I get more of the spectrum to play with. Cool. Yeah. Okay, pen tool. So often the hard part of this is just like knowing where to start. <laughs> it can be a tricky sort of thing. So my advice is just like where there maybe is a clear shape that you can get going. So I'm going to zoom on in and start rolling. Oh, you can see that I haven't loaded my pen well. So I'm going to get rid of that fill and I need to see the stroke that I'm making. So let's make it electric green because we're talking about electric colors and we'll keep going. With this, you don't need to get it perfect. It's fine just to mess up uh, an angle or two and come back and fix it. Because what I'm about to do is going to have a sort of minimal appearance and it's vaguely going to be geometrically perfect, but not really like the examples we showed. I'm going to simplify the edges. So you can see here, I didn't really go into his arm or his suit. Just like a straight line is absolutely fine. Okay. So I'll come back up and I'll get the inside of his arm and his elbow in a little bit. Actually, bow is a really satisfying shape to, to pen tool. Yeah, and right now you're not really worried about the, uh, well, obviously the color. You're just picking something Absolutely. that has some contrast. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, it's just so that I can see what's going on. Cool. I like it. And I mean, for, for this, the main tools we're going to be using are Pen Tool and Shape Builder to, you know, make our segments and add colors and patterns. Vanessa is amazed at how well some people can use the Pen Tool. Yeah. Like yourself. Oh, you know, yeah. it's just 10 years. That's all. It's, but it, the pen tool is your best friend once you know how to use it. Yeah. But it does take so much training, doesn't it? It's not necessarily the most instinctual tool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, in your good old toolbox. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, you know, if you've ever used the curvature tool. Oh yeah, that helps get some more perfect lines going on. Yeah. It's, it's nice if you, honestly, if you want really smooth curves. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if you use it because just based on the examples you showed earlier, if you wanted those smooth, interesting curves. Yeah. yeah I mean, well I don't people. think I actually did, but not against it. Absolutely not. Yeah. I might continue this one. Uh, you're going to see me do a lot of this. Okay. So a lot of this overlap and it's because the shape builder tool really, really, really likes for you to have defined a shape. So for me going over, just make sure that I'm going to get that shape. So here I'm going to go over and not worry about it. Okay, we're not trying to get it exactly to match. Just going to get a bit of his sleeves going on. Yeah, Vanessa or who actually Anita, I don't know if there's a if if there's some sort of frame underneath that outfit. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like I I I, I don't I mean, think David Bowie's legs are actually shaped that way. He's quite a slender man. I don't know. He, yeah. <laughs> he there, doesn't skip leg day. That's for sure. Yeah. There's some pretty cool articles, actually, if anybody can find them and put them into the forum of the costume designer who worked on these ones, because he also did the almost crocheted leotard look and 
the stripy skin tight suit. Oh, uh, really? abs absolute genius. Yeah. Okay. So I've vaguely done the shape of Bowie's um, uh, jumpsuit, I guess. And then we're going to go onto the face. So like I was saying before, I think glam rock is pretty much about this costuming and the spectacle. And I'm going to focus more on that. So for that reason, I'm going to choose not to go too in depth with the facial features. We also weren't seeing the facial features really shown on the mood board. When it comes to like lips, I might bring them out because that's that makeup sort of feel. But, you know, you guys choose your level of intricacies that you're going to put on. This is also a time that I'm going to really illustrate how you may have a reference, but you may have to betray the reference and create your own artistic interpretation of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And it, just, it, it can it can be tricky, like what, what you're doing right now. It's like figuring out, you don't want to get into all the detail, I assume, mm -hmm, but figuring yeah. out what features are kind of needed to represent Bowie, Bowie in this, this illustration. Yeah. What's, what's the minimal amount for you to get that recognition? Um, just want to point out here, so there's a little asymmetry going on between the hairline, because I think his head's just slightly tilted. That might not come across very well with what we're doing, so I'm going to choose to, to create more of a symmetrical sort of hairline. And interestingly enough, the ear is like a little bit off on the distortion, so I'm going to try and mimic more so the ear on the other side. Maybe I'm still a bit too tall out on this. Um, also, if you draw a very strange looking elf ear, that's okay. You can come back and fix it when you need to. We'll get that jawline. Yeah. Are I'll you, are you worried? Or are you, are you thinking about, um, uh, what parts you're going to fill? I'm curious how you, how you're going to do the filling. Yeah. I, I know you're going to get to it and I think you have some good, good <laughs> things going on. I have some super, super quick tricks, I think. <laughs> Um, which will just be like painting with Shape Builder, which is my strange use of Shape Builder. I don't think it's one of the normal ways to use it, but it, for me, it just saves me a lot of time. So I don't need to deal with live paint. So we'll get somewhere like this. If immediately you want to fix something or even it up, you go ahead. Oh, it's okay. I think the reason you extended that jaw, that line from the jaw beyond mm -hmm. the neck yep. right there is because yep. you want to make sure that it connects. Like you're going to make sure it fills that area. Absolutely. Because if we yeah. go with the shape builder here and that's not really over, because we, mm -hmm. do we know the command Y when you can see the previews, you may think when you're out of it, it's really deceptive and it looks like that's connected, right? But when you go command Y, oh, it is a little bit connected. Let's... Yeah, that looks connected, but your command Y and it's not. And that means Illustrator is really not going to read it as an enclosed shape. So right now, I'm just going to overshoot it. Absolutely, it doesn't really matter the way that we're illustrating. Um, hence his shoulders and all of this sort of stuff going on. And maybe we'll go and a lips tool. I'm going to get this orb. Uh, I'm going to ask a stupid question, Shanti. I don't know if you know the answer or if chat does, but there isn't a symmetry tool baked into Illustrator. Oh, I mean, you Is could there? definitely grab this and mirror reverse it for sure. Yeah. So there's no yeah. actual like symmetry tool. I do know, <sighs> I think people are excited about Photoshop on the, or excuse me, Illustrator on the iPad, which has a symmetry option which is going to be awesome that's so great that. yeah that um you know if you guys want to approach this with this like get that perfect geometry and that absolute symmetry you could just draw half a bowie or whoever and and go for it um this one is really really symmetrical when we get to you know just elton or the boots or any other ones that we're going to do today uh we don't really have that symmetry to work with but it would work for this one for sure all right, so hair, hair and feathers and all these funny things that we're about to illustrate today. They're so hard to figure out the shape of it. I actually sort of make it up myself because of what we're doing. I kind of 
go for the almost anime styled version of it. Not too much. And you're finding your own line. I like it. I think the eyes are going to be really interesting. How well, do you do those? I've if you even do them. To, yeah, I've actually decided okay. to not do the eyes. Cool. Um, there is one moment where we have Elton with some pretty impressive specs that we're going to go for. But for this, we'll keep it more about the costume. So we've got this little, I don't know, spiky like cowlick thing going on. So I might give him a little maybe a bit more subtle than that. And it's gonna come across pretty strange at first, but we'll go back and we'll fix it. You know, one of the tools that I've kind of started using in the past year is mm -hmm. the, it's the warp tool. Warp tool. Uh, or there's also scallop and crystallize. They're basically all behind the yeah. width tool. And if you just, you, you want to just kind of push, push lines as if they're like liquid. Yeah. Then the warp tool kind of does that, which is kind of nice. And I didn't really use that up till like maybe the past couple of years, actually. Yeah. Even though it's I, been there forever, right? I know. It's one of the forgotten tools. I feel like, oh, we'll come back and grab that guy. Um, that and like the crystallize. It's yeah. so fun just to get like a group of, squares and like make them wrinkle out yeah yeah it's very cool all right so obviously the trajectory of this guy is a bit strange so maybe we've got too many things going on let's change our mind Yeah, Bowie also has, somebody says Bowie has a strange ear. <laughs> Who knows I, where that comes from? Oh, is that part of, like, his anatomy, or is it just this? I don't know. He does have two different color eyes. I forget what that's called. Well, he has a different sized pupil. Oh, is it different sized pupil? I thought it was like Yeah, one style eyes. very, very, di I mean, obviously we're looking at this very pixelated version, but it's a very... Uh, dilated people going on there. All right, something like that, oh, and then sweet. Let's, Looks good. I'm you know, we've switch. got this idea. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I, I I I I found a audience, and it's exactly what you're talking about. It's like his dilated pupils are actually different sizes. I thought he had different colored eyes, but that's fascinating. Yeah, it. I mean, I'm not sure what it is, but it's it's always really cool, and it's so beautiful in all of his images. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even just looking at this electric green, if we ever did a genre that was looking at techno or something or EDM music, we could have a lot of fun with just the style that we're sort of creating now. Um, and then, oh, the last little bit I got to get is this guy's shoes because they're amazing. And quick platforms. Lots of overlap, overlap with those lines, just as before. Fascinating. <laughs> Into it. So thanks for that info in chat. Yeah, he was injured. That's why his eye is different. So technically he does, he, it's both. He has two different colored eyes and then one, he got in a fight. So one eye got injured and is like permanently dilated. Wow. Uh, which is fat, fat, just wild. And it was done by a, a guy hit him. Yeah. And this, the guy he got in a fight with is uh george underwood who created artwork so he was the artist for some of the early albums for david bowie he's the one that hit him and got his pupil all dilated so anyways I, random I, artistic differences I should... yeah wow. but they, they were still friends they got in a fight got punched, and then he went on after that because i guess this was in school so yeah. after that they ended up uh, he ended up creating artwork for him wow well thank you so much for that trivia that's awesome yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. Mildly obsessed with Bowie. I'm so sad that I didn't get to see his traveling costume uh, exhibition that went around the world. It, I missed it in every city that I was in by like a day. Uh, okay, we're going to get to the color portion of like, let's add some color to Bowie. I'm going to just select all unused in my, my swatches and get rid of these guys. And I'm going to open a swatch library. So I've already preloaded this one, but I'll talk through the colors themselves. So we'll move them in. Let's maybe go small list view so you can see it a little bit better. Does the zoom sort of work when I do that for you guys? Let's hope it's zoomed in for you. Uh, we've got red, pretty self-explanatory. The blue also self-explanatory coming across in the Bowie. I didn't go with a gold tone, um, like as in a, a browner or bronzer gold tone. I went with quite a bright yellow, but to reference that, and the pink from the Roxy Music background. I also bought the pink in, maybe it wasn't around in the era so much, but it's about taking what was there and making it my own as well. I've got a thing with pink, absolutely. And I think it's gonna help contemporize these images. So that's my palette. And of course we need black and white. So yeah. they're going to act as our neutrals. Yeah. And I don't, are you, did you say you're doing a screen zoom? Because I don't think we're seeing it. Just not a big deal, though. Oh, that's OK. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I've got control zoom uh, enabled uh, here. But if you can't see that, I that's fine. It. Yeah. Yep. OK. So we're going to select this all. It's a shift M to get our uh, shape builder tool. And like very quickly, without thinking too much, just start applying your colors. So I've got, so I'm, I'm just loading them. We're getting some blue, maybe I'll put some black on his sleeves. The reality of the colors that are currently in his costume are not really what I'm going to do. So I'm, I mean, while yes, it is a bit blue and a bit black going on there, as I continue going, I'm going to not particularly respect what was there and just reinvent it a little bit for ourselves. So we'll put some pink in his boots and zoom on in. Uh, I do want to put some red in his hair. Again on him. Ooh. Let's do that. His gold orb, some lips, his neck. That's mostly him filled in. And just turning your stroke off like that. And then going to your layers palette and turning up the reference image because right now it's like a little bit hard to see what's going on. Now in my plan, I do know that for this page, I am, I'm thinking about having a red background. There was a red background in the photo. I thought that would be a nice tie in. So I'm going to put that in now. So with an end tool. So we can see him. All right, so you can sort of see that maybe I need to do some, some color shifting. So with A, let's put in some pink hair. Love and, it. and we've got pretty far pretty quickly. And you know, if you're seeing some weird shape things that aren't working out so nicely, so maybe I wanna perfect this a little, go for it. One of the things that's maybe bothering me a touch is the continuation from the neck to head. It's formed this one white blob. Uh, I don't want to get too detailed in this illustration, but I think we can do something in here with a little bit of shading to create that, that difference. So what I'll do is bring back my reference. I'm going to shift X to just hide that. Zoom on in. So shift X to just get it back to strokes and have a look at what shading is going on on Bowie. So with my pen tool, maybe somewhere around here, I'm just going to softly hug that chin shadow. Okay. Did you get it? Like? Uh, oh yeah, sorry. What I didn't do was put on a stroke so you all could see. Oh, uh, okay. There. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. I just make sure I didn't miss something. <laughs> no, you're all good. Uh, so we'll go B tool, select this up. 
we will recolor in those little bits and pieces. Might make its head back to red and look at that, making sure that we've got no strokes going on. Okay. So we come back to it. Okay, so it was just a little touch mm -hmm. of shadowing, but it's enough just to differentiate between his head and his neck and create create a little bit of, of depth there. But nothing more than that. I'm not going to go full into detail and in getting more shading. What I will do at this point is uh, bring in the preloaded Illustrator patterns. And I don't know if anybody has been using these in, in like the crinkle tool and the warp tool. Mm -hmm. I've, the old patent library is a long lost forgotten space sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, do you remember these guys? Yeah. yeah. It's funny, so, these are the exact same ones that I go to. I don't yeah. really use a lot of the others, but these dot patterns, pretty cool. Absolutely. So, I mean, for anybody who's new to them, uh, you just draw a box, a circle, a shape, anything you want, and you can apply these obviously if you put it in the fill that's uh much better so we'll put it in the <laughs> fill and you can see all of these preloaded things here that you can use at any time really really quickly um of course you can create your own when it comes to dots but i'm, I'm not entirely sure how i could in any way innovate polka dots particularly but making your own patterns is really easy as well and i'm happy to show that if anybody's curious about it but these are really great. We've also got uh, stripes, various stripes and different thicknesses. We've got some grids that we can use. So I'm going to really play with a bunch of these today to add some more interest and some more depth. Um, if you're doing a different time period, so perhaps if you went and did 80s, uh, can you go and have a look at the basic graphic textures? Because there is some seriously cool looking 80 style yeah. patterns that you can you can use for your characters yeah uh, looks like uh also since some of those outfits were animal prints yeah yeah absolutely it's, we'd be able to mimic them absolutely oh i think there's i mean knowing that there are also all these like funny old cut color ones there I think there is maybe oh here we go we've got animal prints preloaded <laughs> perfect yeah, so if you're doing a, a slightly more or slightly less abstract version than me, go for it and um, do glam metal and get the snake skin on the pants. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I might just clear out this just to note when you do use them, it gets added to your swatches. So you might need to clear out every now and then. Okay, but how am I going to apply this to old Bowie here? Uh, we're going to grab his jumpsuit, command C, command F, and let's have a look at some stripes and just adding that on. What I can do now is maybe make the rest of his jumpsuit blue as well. And command C, command F, so just pasting in front. I can put it on. Oh, I, yeah. Cool. Yeah. The, this um, one. Yeah. Yeah. I got, you could do this one more time. So I have a, there, there's like another way we could do this as well. Yes. Cause you put, you copied one shape on top of another, right? Come on C, F, yeah. Okay, so here, let, let's just do this. Let's try this out. So delete yeah. the one that you copied on top and zoom Done. in on his arm. Zooming. I feel like we snuck this in. You can add a new fill on top of your current fill. Uh, the other side, there's a stroke and fill. Sit at bottom, yeah, bottom left, click. Yeah, yeah. Do it. You have to uh, do it on the. So it, it goes it in layers order? from the, yeah. the. Yeah. Really cool. And you still have all of the, like you could always jump in and you still have the opacity, the blend modes, and all that fun stuff in there too for that fill, as you can. Yeah, that's awesome. A really, really handy tool, for for uh, this one, just because I'm I'm gonna move really you, quickly with just playing with them all and, and bringing yeah, them in. You do I might your thing. I don't do mean to Blanda. break your flow. <laughs> Absolutely Sorry. not. But it's, it's awesome to learn a new trick. That, that's great. Okay. Where are we at? Okay. So I wanted to just sort of have a look at the idea of really playing with 
with these shapes and what you want maybe want to play with in terms of shading and how the lines work. So really quickly, because Illustrator lines up the lines within the grid, you can get these gorgeous connects that happen and they run through the entire uh, figure. When I look at it already, I think that this is a little bit too big and a little bit too intimidating with what we've got going on here. It's uh, too much of one thing. So, you know, using our artistic license, I'm going to maybe delete this and with our own thing, maybe just split his jumpsuit for us. So we'll grab that and our line, shift M, create the two parts. I might even get rid of the little extra bits, holding option down and we'll pop in that. I mean, like this, this is really interesting as well. Like having some blank space, um, you could also like match that and, you know, use different orientations. So we could go object transform. Uh, we're going to do rotate. Now, you know, uh, with this, it likes to automatically fill in transform object and patterns. We don't want to transform the object. So let's untick that and just do the pattern itself. So I'm going to do that. I'm just yeah, gonna... hopefully everybody got that too, because like you just double clicked on your rotate tool, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we went, well, yeah. I went to object transform rotate, but I can definitely oh, okay. slow yeah. down and back, back, back pedal. So cool. um, up here, object, oh, okay. transform, rotate. And just, you know, telling it, to, so normally it comes on with this, well, you know, however you last used it, it will come on, but making sure that transform object is not ticked. Make, and if you can't see what's going on, hit that preview. So we're going to take off transform object and just transform pattern and you can transform it however you want. So maybe you want some funky angles like that. That could be lots of fun. So you can play around. Yeah, that's super fun. I like it. Yeah. Um, so also what's like, this is a, just a, like another quick little tip. Uh, you probably already know this, so I apologize. No, that's But right. like if you're using the rotate tool or even the scale tool, but go to the rotate tool. Okay. This guy. Cool. Uh, uh, right next to it. It's behind the, it's behind the reflect. Ah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Now hold down the tilde key, the which tilde is the squiggly key? line. The squiggly line? Oh, okay. Yeah, above the tab on your like upper left keyboard. Yeah. So now you can rotate the pattern. You should be able to rotate the pattern uh, and not the object. Oh, how interesting. Is it maybe doing I'm it? Not, maybe I'm not the best one at doing that one. Do you have it selected? Let's grab her. Let's yeah, there you go. This. Now now it, now it will work. And I just hold down that tilde key. Ooh, super Isn't that fun. Nice? Oh, wow. Can you plug in, can you plug in like a, a perfect particular, if I hit option uh, and click it, will it do no, it? No, like if you double click on the rotate tool, you can you'll bring get that. that dialogue, which you've already been played with. Yeah, yeah. But it's the okay. equivalent of unchecking that box to not transform the object, just like yeah. you did. Yeah, awesome. I always forget, I always forget about that. I, I forget which key it is, but I was like, okay, it's, it's the squiggly line. It's news to me that the, the key above tab is called a tilde key. Yeah. <laughs> That's lots of fun. Or just the squiggly, the squiggly line. Oh, there's so many. Well, I mean, like, that's, I guess, the, the one of the greatest things about Illustrator and InDesign and many of the Adobe programs is always, like, 10 different ways to do something. It's you just find your way. Yeah. So we'll exactly. cancel out of that. Let's go back. Ooh. It's cool, though. There we go. Uh, cool. So we can maybe play with that. You can change the orientation, play with things as much as you want. Uh, I might put in my background once more of the red. Just so we're understanding what we're working with. I love that. Uh, I like that red because it doesn't look like a true red. No, it's, it's big. Well, actually, it was just like me pretty organically sampling and playing with the the dials but yeah uh, yeah it's cool yeah i needed it to be intense enough to take on take on the pink that was pretty electric as well 
Uh, okay, we'll maybe play with the shoes a little bit. Let's see what we've got here. I know that I am going to bring in a little bit later some dots and, and interesting shapes when it comes to Elton because he has a bit more sequence. So right now what I'm doing is just like browsing. It's kind of like window shopping and seeing what it looks like with different things applied. So this is kind of cool on its own. Maybe I, I could keep it somewhere there. We don't need to do every single shape, absolutely not. And like we're getting pretty close very quickly to something that we can use in, in our editorial. What I might do is because there's like a real balance that's quite low is try and even up the balance a little bit. So I'm going to look at putting a bit of an ellipse and not being particularly exact. So something like this behind it. I also think that in a fun way, it kind of mimics the idea of a spotlight and being on the stage, the stage persona, all of that fun stuff. Uh, and now we can get his hair to be a little bit red. Uh, because I'm really enjoying this like continual wine thing, I think we can continue to push this a little bit. So having a look at some of the other lines. Ooh, something like that maybe, maybe that's a bit too thick. Yeah, something like that. It's pretty interesting, but it is very heavy and I'm aware that it's quite heavy. So I might uh, make a duplicate of that swatch down here. Just gonna go in into it to edit it, selecting it all, getting the stroke and putting on some pink lines. And then I think that that makes it slightly less heavy and he pops off the page a little bit more. And that's, that's basically where we're going to be going with Bowie, that's the end. So I hope that was, you know, a few simple things for you guys to, to pick up on or play with at home. I think it's I think it's really cool. I think it's cool you just taking something. I, I, honestly, the the simplicity of this is awesome. Yeah. Like, I think you could overwork this, and I just I, I like everything you did. So thank you for your good design eye and. Oh no, for sure. Really and like, cool. you know, uh, deciding is one of the hardest things. I you know have played with these swatches a bit, so I know sort of where I'm going. But at home, if you find yourself like clicking a million swatches, that's totally okay. Like duplicate and play. And if you want your Bowie to be slightly more like Lichtenstein-esque and do cool things like this, like you go for it. Like have fun in that experimentation. Cool. All right, next up, I think we can move on to Elton because Honestly, he's the most intimidating one to take on because he's got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's tricky because like again, it's not it it's like Bowie's looking straight forward. Like that that uh Elton is kind of a profile view, but not really. So I'm interested to see what you do with this. This will be cool. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. This is where um once again, if you are quicker on the pen and paper go and do that, um, draw on top of Elton until you can get the shapes that you know that you want, because you do have to remove it a little bit from the reality of the photo. It doesn't necessarily translate, but you guys are gonna see me sort of live problem solve these shapes, hopefully in a good way. Um, yeah, so I know that he's gonna be a double page spread. I didn't really verbalize that, so let me verbalize what I just did. I did have a letter page I know from my plan that I made with my um, thumbnailing that I want to do a bit more of a spread for Elton. So he's going to be bigger and he's going to cross the spine. So I made a double page spread just to sort of plan him out. And I'm roughly, roughly placing him where I think he's going to go. So let's make sure my layers are sorted. So I'm going to turn this back on, unlock the reference layer, grab old Elton, drop him down and lock it again. So we're working on our art just so that you don't 
move the reference uh, accidentally. Okay, so once again, start where you feel comfortable, we'll start where you see a shape. So I'll get my sort of bright lime green color. Oh, even just the yellow is pretty good. Zooming on in. For me, the clearest shape that I can just get the ball running, uh, rolling and, and get some energy going is Elton's uh, bonnet cap, whatever this is. It's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Mm -hmm. To... Yeah, feel free. Just a quick reminder, get your challenge entries in. You can see How... the challenge Ooh. tab. How far yeah, so away we... are we from that? Uh, 30 minutes. 27 oh, cool. minutes. Exactly. All right, we'll get halfway through Elton, maybe. Yeah, let's That's just check great. out the challenge tab. Okay, so we've got our bonnet. You can see immediately I'm just making the line go where I feel it needs to go. So I started on the body shape with Bowie last time. I'm going to zoom on into the, the face and the profile this time, uh, just because when you look at all of this, you might not know where to go. So once again, lots of overlap. I mean, do we have any Elton trivia for the forum to, to let us know? Or like favorite songs? Oh, good question. <laughs> Elton John trivia. Obviously, for Elton, his bedazzled specs are a really big part of him and his stage persona and his, I think, everyday persona. Yeah. He's a pinball wizard. Is that true, true Jennifer <laughs> Poole? <laughs> I think I like, oddly enough, Betty and the Jets is up there. I mean, I know Rocket Man and stuff. It's great as well. Yeah. Tiny dancer. I like uh, Leave On. Leave On. L E V O N. Oh, like can a... you can you sing it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of have a little bit of a of a cold today. Not that I'd sing it normally. I just, I just, I couldn't do it. I just, I don't want to do it. I, it would sound so much like Elton John that this video would get uh, probably restricted because they think oh. we're actually playing an Elton John track. That's what I'm not going to say. Absolutely. No. I think I need you on my team for the karaoke <laughs> tournaments. <laughs> uh. Uh, I can see people in the forum saying Tony Danza. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Tony Danza? What's that a reference to? Uh, I think it's just Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer, but the joke oh. <laughs> that it sounds very similar. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, right, so we're just getting in here, getting some specs on him. Uh, like before, it's gonna look worse before it looks better, and huh. that's okay. That's now. This is this is honestly where, like, again, if you weren't live streaming, you would probably be playing some music or something. Yeah. And oh yeah, listen to a podcast <laughs> or something, and just like Cruising rocking through. out and designing. It's the best. <laughs> I love it, it sure is. Yeah, I mean, like the pen tool, I think for a lot of designers, if it's not something that requires too much mindfulness is kind of zen. Yes. You can, you know, when you're etching in Photoshop, perhaps. Yeah. As well, or masking there as well. I had no idea about that Tony Danza reference. That's so funny. 
<laughs> Melissa knew it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Yasunari likes it. That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, the shape that I think I can work with straight away, uh, maybe this old feather. It's quite bold. It's, it's something I can maybe follow. But really quickly, you're going to watch me go and, you know, color out of the lines, and that's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I'm going to find more geometric shapes. And I think the way that I have illustrated in my past is often figuring out geometric -y versions of shapes on organic, you know, animals and creatures. So this is something that I just sort of do without too much planning. But you guys plan away if this something that's not coming as easy or as automatic it's definitely uh, a skill that takes time to learn going to create this little feather it's got some fun sort of ostrichy shapes there and what else do we have? We've got an interesting sort of shape here. Do you ever, uh, I don't know, I guess you don't really want to drop the opacity of the photo down at all. Um, it's I'm not sure if that would really help with the, the, the system that I'm doing, but I'm sure it could yeah. probably help. I mean, uh, definitely if you want to like check before you get too far, am I doing the right thing? Um, I would definitely turn off my layer. Uh, so just to show that, I guess, just like turn that reference layer off and you can sort of see where you're going. Um, that will automatically tell you when you've got strange, um, spaces in your balance. Mm -hmm. Something like this. So I think we've got some form of arm here. <laughs> we'll go for. Looking good. Yeah, so that's tough. Clever does mention that because it's like, yeah, it's some some parts of that photo it's like really light, so it's kind of hard to see. So it's oh, oh, should tough. I? No, put... you're doing great. I just like for for your own sake, it's kind of hard to follow those. I feel you know it's it's just uh, it's just hard to do. Yeah, because <laughs> that's oh, just a, there's a lighter absolutely. part of that photo as all. Oh, oh yeah, and and we're making stuff up. There's also a whole bunch of shadow going on over here, and it's you really kind of got to make it up yourself. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's the beauty of illustration that it allows you to do that. Okay. So this is a little bit of a have faith moment, guys, uh, which is so often in designs when you're struggling for those concepts or the answer or to figure it out. You often go through a bit of a, a messy stage and then it all comes together in the end, hopefully. So we're going to do that. All right, so we'll leave that there because we know that we can go back and add more segments if we feel we need to. So this feather here is pretty great. I changed it to red, but now I realize the red's probably hard to see for you guys. And just to, yeah, that's that's looking good. I so so just to kind of, mm -hmm. I, I guess, kind of like recap, because like you are having lines cross, you know, Absolutely. cross extend a little bit too far or whatever. Yes. Why are you doing that? Just to clarify for everybody. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So later on, we're going to use that shape builder to fill in these spaces. All of these will disappear in an instant. We're not going to need to worry about them at all. But it's to make sure that this is properly crossed because uh, when you're just viewing it like this, you may think that this is connected because it looks like it's connected, but it's actually not. And when you go Command Y and zoom on in, you can see here we've got a gap 
which means Illustrator is not going to register it. Yeah. So I, I definitely really, really over exaggerate it. And it's the have faith moment. It's going to work out. Yeah. <laughs> Looks good. It's gonna work out. You you continue to do that. I know you have some some stuff to do. I'm gonna switch over to my screen real, real fast, yeah. just to also just just to kind of break it up a little bit. So here I'm in Illustrator as well. So you have these uh, like extra little lines that you know break out, uh, and this is exactly what Shanti's doing. But it's cool that you could use the shape builder just to eliminate any line that mm -hmm. goes and extends further. So uh, just hold down the option key, we'll subtract from whatever you scrub over. So option key, zap, zap, zap if I wanted to, but you get the idea. You're like zapping away parts of these lines and stuff. So anyways, uh, that's kind of cool. So that's all. Yeah, totally. It's, it's one of the most versatile tools. I think when it turns up, I just stopped using Pathfinder and so many other things. Yeah. Preloaded. Any tips on how to practice detailed illustrations? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's the, the same old thing where it's just a little bit of practice. Um, yeah. yeah um, I mean, also find a subject matter that you love because you're going to be staring at it for a long time. Yeah, that's a good, <laughs> that's a great tip. Yeah, something that you care about, you know, your dog or something, and then try it once. I think sometimes we perfect it on one subject or one idea and then, you know, don't move forward. Uh, we move forward onto something else. But I think drawing the same kinds of things over and over really, really helps to hone that skill. So yeah. if you are doing, you know, elephants, keep doing a few elephants until you get one that you're super proud of. Yeah. That is that is good good advice. And if something doesn't seem right, you could always step away, come back to it later oh, on. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, but it honestly, just kind of comes down to hard work. So I like your that's why I like your tip about picking something that you love. Because yeah. you want to spend some quality time with it. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I had that um, idea when I back when you would put custom ringtones on your alarm clock. I was like, let's pick a song that I super love so I won't hate having to wake up and it definitely <laughs> backfired. Because <laughs> <laughs> then you just stay in bed and listen to the song. Yeah, well, no, now that when I hear it out, when I'm out, I have that uh, whole, oh, I've got to get up and I don't want to. Oh, feeling. I see. So it's ruined it for <laughs> you. Oh, yeah, no. it kind of spoiled it. But, <sighs> you know, give it time and it won't, won't be a bother. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of stuff here and I might just like stop at this point and because you can always go and add more and more detail and you can simplify at any stage. So I just kind of want to take a snapshot of like, where am I actually in this illustration? Because I'm dealing with lots and lots of lines and, and quite a lot of complexity. Yep. Yeah. And save the file. <gasps> oh my God, guys, thank you. <laughs> Let's do it, glam rock. I'm, I feel like I feel like Illustrator is really good with uh, saving, re like recovering a crashed file and stuff. Absolutely. Because like, when was the last time you had to actually redo something like from scratch? I know for me it's been ages. Yeah, it's been a fair, fair while. Because I, I mean, I, remember when you first started out? You're like, oh, your computer crashed. Oh, you lost the file. Oh, you have to do it again. Like I mm -hmm. was used to that feeling. And now we just don't have that feeling as much anymore. Just create a little border here. They, I mean, it happened in different programs at different times, right? I remember in InDesign, it had it there and feeling like, oh, I wish Photoshop had it. And then they all got it in the end, which is really great. All right, shift M. Uh, okay, so let's start adding some colors. See where we're at. See if I didn't, you know, join up any of the things particularly well, uh -huh. which absolutely could happen. This is the fun part. I know. It's fun, this is fun like, watching you do this part. This is the coloring in part of life. Like somehow managed to find uh, <laughs> a career where I can still color in. Yeah. 
on, on that note of saving, um, so like uh, Illustrator on, excuse me, Photoshop on the iPad, you, there actually is no save. It's constantly being saved. Wow. So it's really when you close the file, that's like, you know, when you end up like naming it, right? But you just, it's, there's no save because it's constantly being saved. Because that, mm -hmm. that's the awesome thing about cloud documents. Uh, you, you could potentially, maybe the same thing will happen for Illustrator as well on the iPad. But I don't know for sure because it's not out yet. And I'm not leaking any information either because I don't know. <laughs> or maybe I Bring do and I just did. I don't know. It's fine. Are we not getting the scoop? Yeah, I kind of just roundabout gave you guys the scoop. <laughs> While well, try to keep my job. Uh. Try to keep my job here, people. <laughs> so yeah, Melinda, I had the same thought about like uh, dim the photo 50%. Yeah, I, yeah, it's kind of, you could do that. Absolutely. You know, Shanti, I know you, you didn't. I probably wouldn't because I want to be able to see that photo just better. See what's happening But this is looking there. just very exotic. This oh is... yeah, it's, it's become the parrot in some way. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, all right, so let's turn off that back layer and like see what we're dealing with because this is when you need to make those adjustments to make sure it's working. So let's put in a bit of a background color so we can see him. That looks awesome. And we also, w when you get a point, uh, mm -hmm. someone wants to know how to Artie Chick wants to know how you change the the line color because currently your line color is red when you draw lines. Oh, like just changing the stroke color? Yeah. Absolutely. And, and not the, does that, yeah, yeah, since it's red, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do it, do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah, um, just changing strokes. So let's draw some squiggly lines over here. And, and what I'm referring to is that red that you're seeing right now. The red that you're seeing. The red of that line. That, that line is... Uh, the the path. Yeah. Oh, why is it red and not aqua? Yeah. Because of the layer. Okay. Sorry. I was going to show changing strokes. This guy here will like indicate what color it's going to be drawing in. Yeah. Um, so if I am on the reference layer, which is ele uh, elected to be blue, so let's turn it on so I can actually draw on it. Let's escape. I'm on reference should go oh it's not going blue oh there we go sorry oh that's oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. there we go yeah. and it's blue sorry i had one point drawn on the and then different layer. How, how, how do you change it especially since you're tracing how do you change the color i think you can is if we got options for reference layer um so you can pick your favorite color <laughs> whatever it is so light yeah. blue we can change it to green and go okay and now my drawing stroke is green yeah, I, I would like it if if uh, if we could if we could get Adobe to just like I want to be able to always establish the color blue as always being the uh, outline color. Always being. I, it. I, I wish. I, uh, yeah, because it kind of actually picks the color at random. It seems, or at yeah, least goes I mean, down the list. I feel like it. But like anyway. it's almost. Yeah, it's almost always blue. I think that first one, or yeah. or that turquoise. Or am I making that up? Yeah, no, you're right. Does, does so, it it's like a bluish. Yeah. All right, so let's let's do that then. Let's... And and that's important because if you are tracing an illustration and it's green and your line is green, you're not going to be able to see it. Good so. Plan. All right. Well, maybe kill these guys a bit. Lock that one up. We'll hide it. Gonna lock this. So we've got, maybe we'll make this white so we can see a version of the piano. Um, he is missing a torso. Big oversight, so let's put one in. So I'll just start drawing it. I'm, I could reference the image again, but for now, I'm just going to sort of place it in. Let's make it not white so you guys can see it. I was just sorry mm -hmm. to be quiet. No? I'm just checking out uh, the challenge entries 
for oh, yeah? today because that's yeah. going to end in about, or at least we're going to review those in about eight-ish minutes. So that's oh, what I was just awesome. looking at. So it's quiet. So go to the go. challenge tab. Submit via Discord. That's great. I'm looking forward to seeing them. So I'm going to start filling in spaces that I feel like maybe could use another feather or so. This is just your own artistic interpretation of it. good yeah and then maybe i'll like i've made this shape let's get some repetition of it to fill out more of his plumage hey victor that's a good question a chance for a stream creating content for social media yeah we could talk about we could talk about social media all day long like this would work for social mm. media yeah i think just because it's it's so it's so uh just honestly this works for social media because it's bright it's bold especially that first one with um you know um bowie david bowie like anytime somebody's looking directly at you they that's like that's pretty impactful too um but yeah cool yeah social media posts come into my life quite a lot when it just comes to visual identity branding design and that's when you know you've got a really good branding system going on is when you can get the flexibility to change up those social media posts so that it's, you know, looking like a family set, but yeah. showing something fresh and new every time. Yeah, that is good. Anthony Jackson loves the bright, bold colors. I agree. Thank You're you. nailing the colors like right out of the gate, I feel. <laughs> so good it's, job yeah well definitely my favorite bit and but i mean you've... also hmm. yeah go oh no i was just gonna say that like so the first one with uh, uh david bow is pretty straightforward this has to be one of the more complex subjects like you're taking organic mm -hmm. shapes and a face that's more than a three-quarter view it's like very complex yeah and, and and still made it like you of course made it look really good too it's looking really good Thanks. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're about to add a little bit of like depth and shading and, and pattern work and all of that sort of stuff to make it a bit more vibrant. And knowing that this is this is a not a standalone artwork. It's not something that's like meant to be necessarily print on the wall. This in the end is all for editorial, like the beautiful, beautiful art of editorial. And it's going to sit, you know, with content and all of this is planned out. So I've got plenty of, um, you know, negative space to hold my content when it comes to it. So yeah, just a bit of planning helps with all of this. Okay. Sure. And that's what I think you're good at. Like you seem organized to me. Are you, are you organized? <laughs> um, Pretty organized? When it comes to design, yes. I don't know about life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I mean, I mean, I might leave it there. I feel like we've got some cool, like, flow going on in this plumage. You know, you just saw me make up some new feathers to fill in some awkward sort of gaps there. As I start to add patterns, maybe I'll, like, switch up the colors if it's not quite working. But, you know, it's that explore exploration phase. So I think number one that I want to do for sure is have a look at the old spots for his head because he had those cool gems on it. <laughs> so we might mimic that. Maybe we'll like use some smaller dots. Let's see. Mm, they are cool. These are cool. We like sort of the contrast of them. Do I maybe call back to some of the lines that we've used elsewhere? It looks, you know, an odd little bit uh, strange on that one. Oops. We'll transform it. So 
something like that. Yes. This is good. Maybe something there. Um, just Keith. in this stage. Oh, hi. Hello. Just welcoming. If you're just joining us, feel free to say hello. Welcome. Maybe I'll make this one dots. Once again, draw your own lines of when too much is too much. I think I cross that line pretty regularly. Uh, and then try and bring myself back a little. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I need some more yellow popping through now that I've could have I sort of blanked out a bit of that yellow with that pattern so I'm bringing in some more maybe this is a bit too strong yeah Catherine to answer your question the uh, live sessions are archived in fact if you are on well you obviously you are on Behance if you're not on Behance join us over here but just scroll down on the page uh, we'll usually categorize them past you know basically replays and put them in the appropriate category so yours will be available in the graphic design category uh, once we're done today that's awesome but I'm glad we get you tomorrow as well because, <laughs> I mean, really, we're, we're in Illustrator. We're going to have more time to get into this after we review some of the challenge entries. Yeah. But um, I'm glad yeah, we're in two days. For sure. I mean, today it's just all of the illustrator -y stuff, and then tomorrow we're definitely going to mix it up a little bit more and get into the InDesign side of things. And then maybe... Um, uh, do you use uh, do you do edit colors or do you do recolor artwork or any of that? Do you use that? Not particularly because they are swatches. If I wanted to do a sweeping change, I could definitely, you know, split okay. color and and go for that. If if I have a palette change, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think a, that that might be a good place to look for people who are because they're complimenting you and your colors basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm Thanks, I'm guys. I'm just trying to think of ways like for them to kind of practice with different colors, and I think recolor mm -hmm. artwork would is a good way to kind of experiment with colors to just get different effects. I see. Yeah, um, pal palettes are part a really interesting thing, and then I think like the experimental like. Um, try try new palettes and spit them out is really good. There is a bunch of theory behind all of it as well. Um, I think what I do is I often, uh, if, if you're doing something like this and you want to be able to just really plug and play very quickly and, and get harmony, often picking colors of the same um, brightness and tone or vibrancy really, really helps. So in my psychedelic, they're a little bit more muted, a bit pastel, um, and very sympathetic. The colors were really, really close to each other. This time I've gone very, very complimentary, but they've all got that same like electric saturation. Mm -hmm. So they're really easy to mix and play. But if I had something that was navy and something pastel, probably wouldn't work as easy. So with my style of illustration and this, that's what's helped. For sure, that is that is really good. Somebody's mentioned, uh, Josu mentioned coolers. There's also color.adobe.com, all that good stuff. So yeah. Thanks for well, uh, joining us today. Welcome, Michael Calabro's first time. It's cool. All right, well, we're actually kind of uh, two minutes over and reviewing those submissions. So oh, let's yeah. dive I'm... into it. And I will share yeah. my screen. Shanti, I'm sorry. I know you can't see my, uh, <laughs> I'm going to share my 
trust me, I'm not going to leave you in the dark with this, but I'm going to <laughs> share my video. You should be able to see the live feed now. Yeah. And we'll switch over to my screen and we'll get into this. All right, cool. Here we are. You guys should be able to see my screen. Of course, this is the stream. You're looking at the stream, looking at the stream. But essentially right over here, I'm just pointing out this challenge tab right here. So for the challenge, uh, design a pie chart, uh, a pie using chart, the charts tool. It's like pie chart, the play on words there. Um, and then you post to the current challenge Discord channel. Okay, so that's where everybody's going to find everything. We'll go right over there. Boop, Discord. You could also click on that link, but actually, no, I don't think it's called current challenge. I think it's just called challenge. Challenge. So that's where I've been seeing them and right in here. So let's let's take a look at these pie charts that have been made in Illustrator, starting at the with the newest from EMX. We might get some interesting names here. EMX. There we are. Pie chart. This looks really cool. <laughs> Not fun. And just for context, by the way, let me just show you this real fast. I didn't show this a second ago. Um, yeah. But there usually is a starter file. So you click there for the starter file. Um, and we can kind of see what Andrew made as well. So let me just show you right down here. Apologies. Here's what he ended up making as part of his presentation, just to give you some context. So yeah, that's what great. we kind of showed, a little 3D action, and also showed how to uh, do this, um, uh, what do you call it? Just kind of zigzag the edges. But this, they nail it in terms of the zigzag and all that. It's pretty cool, right? Absolutely. Shanti, what do you think of the color? Uh, amazing. Actually, just what I was saying about similar saturated colors, this is a great example. They're all of a similar mute. Um, so they work really, really well together and they're evenly weighted. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, what, what's, which pie slice would you pick? The yellow. It, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cool. maybe the purple because it's, it's the bigger one. But, uh, that's what yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> which I was also going to say that what, whichever one with the most like uh, whipped cream, whipped cream. Whip topping. So very cool. Uh, that's Anthony's, by the way. Here's EMX's as well. Hey, getting a couple Anthony. different versions into it. Oh, wow. Look at that nice subtle shading on the, the left. That's really beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like over here like that. Yeah. Like yeah. I love that uh, just hint of depth in there, which is nice. I think this is meant to be a donut. Absolutely. That's a great cool. sprinkled donut. <laughs> a little sprinkled donut. It's cool. Uh, I would just say try to see if you can get the a little bit of shading on the inside, too, to sell it more as a, you know, uh, a donut, but very cool. Uh, here, Pin now did uh, turn that pie chart into a cake, wow. which is cool. Blueberry, yeah. excuse me, blueberry and plum pie, I guess. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Yeah, getting that time. That's really great. It's a it, you know unique way to take it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, other challenges in the mix. I'm not sure why this one looks... Oh, they just reposted it. Sorry about that. Oh, Chocolita Strawberry Cheesecake. That's oh, fun. Wow. This is awesome. That's cool. Yeah, so you could make something 3D in Illustrator, and then you could have another 3D uh, illustration and map it on any one of the sides of the 3D shape, which is what's happening here. Mm -hmm. that part which is pretty cool and good use of color again right I like yeah. the, I just like that uh, the background the green okay. it's so great that you guys are all experimenting with pretty much infographics right so yeah, uh, yeah data and and all of those things are so hard to access but by making you know graphs fun and engaging you help people access that information yeah. it's really great <laughs> Infographics are, you know, pretty huge. Speaking mm -hmm. of like social media and getting information out there. Yep. Infographic is the way to go. Let's scroll up. That might be it. Day one was all about digital baking. So that's why you get a lot of these. Oh, so fun. Fun little. 
That's great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I would probably get so hungry watching this, uh, the Daily Creative Challenge for Illustrator. <laughs> You know, since I think it's like basically a baking theme. All right, Nicole got one in as well. Sweet. Literally sweet. Look at that <laughs> donut. It, it's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. That, that, that one looks like a full Simpsons render one. So good. That's all done in Illustrator. Doing an extrusion and then beveling the edges. Mm -hmm. Which is really cool. That's awesome. Uh, people are so clever. And also, I love the variety of things tried just on this one screenshot. So, you know, yeah. all the different angles and, and styles. Yes. That's how you get to be so good it's through all of this experimentation. For <laughs> sure. Hopefully everybody's into this. Has to be my favorite. This one wins. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are no winners. We just think they all look delicious and fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I could review a little bit more. If we get more in before the end of the hour, maybe we'll click over and show them off. But this does give you more time, which is good, Shanti. So For you sure. guys still have more time to get uh, your uh, challenges in for us to review. And again, you're watching us here. Just go to this challenge tab and uh, follow the directions. Pretty straightforward. So cool. I'm going to switch back to you. And nice. Here. Uh, all right, let me just change my view. There we go. Okay. So, I mean, do we have a roughly 20 minutes left? Is that what I'm looking at? Uh, yeah, roughly. I would, yeah, I would say about 18. Uh, 18? Seven, seven, 17 minutes. All right. Nothing yeah. like speed design. Let's do this. I'm going to leave old Elton here. He's looking great. He's looking glam. This is where we need him to be. Um, so I hope whatever ones you're drawing at home, you're having fun uh, making your, your, your idol. I'm going to focus on the cover for this last little bit and bring in some platform boots. Oh my God. Just small, not paid plug for Dole's Kill, who has the best platforms ever. Uh, we're going to lock this in. Now, just being aware you know, you can do any sort of platform. You can draw your own from your own imagination. Later on, I've, I've done a lipstick that I just drew. So if it's simple things, you don't always need a reference, but it's up to you. So let me just pop this. Oh, that's locked. Make sure we can see it. Lock it in place. And let's draw I these. I love those. I know. I love those boots. Who wants those boots? Those oh, boots are awesome. Absolutely. Go I'm going to go that. hiking in those boots. <laughs> uh, Shanti, um, I'm going to be back in like one second. I just need to get a tissue because I have a little bit of a cold. Sorry. Oh, I'll be back in one second. Yes, of course. Please <laughs> do. Uh, okay, guys. I'm going to speed through this one a little bit just so we can get it going. Uh, because one of the other things I want to teach is just working in Illustrator in uh, illustration into its type package. So we're going to also look at our type package today. Okay. Going to move these. Voodoo Val loves these boots. Uh, I would say to Lindsay Palmer, like, what do you mean your younger self would, uh, would wear those boots every single day? Why not your older self too, right? We all deserve There's no reason suits. he can't. You could still wear them. <laughs> Maybe not hiking. His whole... Well, um, there's a there's a drag queen called Patagonia out there who does do hiking in these boots and is amazing. Oh, a drag queen? <laughs> yeah, called Patagonia. Pat Pat Patagonia? Patagonia. Huh. Nice. Um, who's just an incredible person and activist out there if you all want to see them. <laughs> Oh yeah, let's. Very cool. Mhm. Mm I think there's a compilation where they uh, almost break their ankle many, many times on some rocks and stuff, going hiking in these kinds of boots. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh man, there's like some some pretty good photos out there. Patagonia, awesome. Let's switch over. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm just gonna share. Please do. Pat Patagonia a picture of Patagonia in the awesome awesome heels hiking, which is pretty cool. And again, yeah. right there. How about that? That's the uh, hiking. Amazing. Knows. That's fun. And just so everybody knows, skill. we're so thankful that you're here. Everybody's everybody's allowed here. Uh, just thankful to be a part of such an awesome, awesome, inclusive group of friends. So yeah. thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm very appreciative to be, you know, sharing your space with all these, you know, great people. Fabulous. And we're doing a little bit of speed tracing. She may be a little bit rough than normal, but it's all good. <sighs> People like the boots. To admit boots are awesome and I th I'm glad you're showing this because it's like anything really cool honestly it took somebody some time to make yeah and that's essentially what you're showing here like there's there's sometimes there's just no substitute for hard work right yeah. there are people like you that'll get fast at it uh, you know and that's why we have the daily creative challenges mm -hmm. it's like yeah there's no substitute for hard work you can get faster and work smarter uh, just by watching sessions like yours, Shanti, and mm. then practicing in the daily creative challenges. Yeah. But I like that there's like no there's no substitute for hard work. Look at this; it's coming to life now. Look at that! Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Bam, speed, bam. speed, go. <laughs> I think I a it. part of it is just you know uh, being okay to fail in these things. I think you know students starting off if it's not looking like a real thing very quickly can maybe be put off and a bit scared to keep going but it's mm -hmm. the old have faith in it it's gonna go somewhere and even if it doesn't it's not wasted time the next one will get somewhere yeah exactly so even you know if you're making a design and you don't end up going with the design usually in the back of your head i don't know if you think this way it's like yeah i'm gonna this is a good idea i'm gonna use this somewhere right it's, yeah you have this, that? absolutely um there are so many skills that i've learned that i didn't you know um mapping 3d type and stuff i was just learning that i wasn't very good at it for a really long time um couldn't get the illusion Worked on it for a long time and then very quickly some work found me that was absolutely perfect to use that from. It's like these things come back. I agree. Rarely are things wasted. Only if you do it and then forget it, then mm -hmm. it's like, okay, then that's like, I think we just, we, I think honestly, yeah, I mean, it's all putting to use what we know at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. All right. Put some depth in Are you experimenting with some different uh, patterns in here? I think most of them are reference from before, but I think oh, okay. every time you use them, they feel something new. Yeah. It adds something different. Very cool. Ooh. And find my little mini dot. Oh, Dana. Dana wants to know where you can, where she can get the dots and lines, those swatches. Absolutely. We can't tell you. No, oh, we, can. Yeah, we can tell you. They're hidden. She's, she doesn't even need to get them because she actually already has them. You do have them. doesn't know it. Yeah. They're like this great little hidden asset that we haven't, not, we don't always utilize. Maybe you guys do, but I um, ignored them for quite some time. So just in your swatches palette, go to the little hamburger fly out menu and you can go open swatch library and there's a whole bunch of things there. So you want to go to patterns, um, basic, 
uh, basic graphic dots where, you know, four levels into Inception here, and then it'll come up for you and you can use them. And just uh, toggle across on your arrows and you can see the lines and a whole array of swatches for you to use. Very cool. All right. And there's definitely a ton in there. Mm-hmm. So I might leave this here. Oh, look at that. I forgot to give some depth with my heel. <coughs> Let's add that in. Yeah, so Joytirama, Joy I'm not sure if I'm saying your name correctly, but mm -hmm. doesn't quite understand how to use Shape Builder to add color. Oh yeah, because it's probably not the correct way that I'm doing it. Uh, but oh, I'm like, happy no. to show you guys. Because you're, so we... yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, and, sure. and you could. I think one thing that's unique about what you're doing is you're just you're just creating all these outlines. You're like outlining everything. Absolutely. Right. So there is no fill whatsoever. But mm -hmm. what Shape Builder does is it makes fills where there weren't fills before. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe that's where that's where that's where it might get a little confusing for people. And there you go. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Sweet. Okay. So we've got Thank some you. lines and we got a little box going on. Oh, yeah. Whatever. We've got a curved line. That's fine. So it's all about selecting it. Um, Shift M gets your Shape Builder. Uh, what I can do is like, I'll remove the, the stroke. Uh, you can load your shape builder with the color that you want to go there. So it's kind of like skipping the live paint sort of section. So you can go blue and click it in and it will go blue, red, yellow, pink, you know, and likewise, if you hit option and you're like, I needed an L and not a square, you can remove that shape and you can also remove lines. As well, yes like we saw before so there's like lots Love of fun that. things that it does thank you so much for showing that again that's really Absolutely. cool okay so what have we got five minutes i might just we may not even get time to do the entire type package just knowing that this is something that is uh neutral that i want to show onto the actual cover uh one website i want to show is fonts in use it's a, a you know an old, old faithful, basically. Once in use in the seventies. This is how we find out what they were doing. Oh my God, Alice Cooper. So, um, like they had so many character filled fonts that they were using and really drawn to, to quite a few. This one, maybe it's called Zhao is really great. Uh, what else do we have? Spiral stack, really cool stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah. I didn't even, I did not even know about the site. Oh my gosh, it's just so good to look at any time period and see what fonts were prevalent. It, it's absolutely great. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what is cool is like, so say, and I mean, I've looked at this before and done some preparation. One font that I was drawn to was cable. So if you find something that's it's like talking to you and what you're doing, you can click that font and what it will do is find you other uses of that font. Um, so you can see in comparison how they look. So let's, so, yeah, let's see. So yeah. the Rolling Stone Sticky Fingers used it. You can see the ABBA soundtrack used it. Um, whatever it is on this one. Uh, there goes there goes my afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> they, this is it, awesome. It ah. was in the Wrangler logo. Oh my god, talking about Patagonia, bringing that yeah. back. <laughs> So Pat Patagonia, Wrangler, I mean, the lockup on this James Gang, uh, so uh -huh. great. So, you know, that like really influences me. So we'll see where I can get in the little Very short cool. time that we have. But I'm going to write good old glam one. Let's zoom on in because I realize it's very small for you all. And you just you just did a search for like what 1970s or something like that or? Yeah, so I wrote into Google. Fonts in use 1970s, but if you go fonts in use the 1980s, it will take you directly to that that um, search result. Just pick whatever you would like. Yeah. Nice. Love it. 
Very cool. Yeah. Brad thinks it's way awesome. Brad, you are correct. Yay! I'm into it. Thank I'm glad you. that we could get there. Uh, okay, so glam rock, pretty easy. So I want to, you know, kind of want to make it your own and not just have it as generic. So for this, when you look at them already, we've got these beautiful ascender descender things happening. There's some like negative space that's almost hugging it. Uh, so looking at building a bit of a tight package with this. And I might actually outline it because I want to treat this as shapes. So yeah. always keep another copy with the type because sometimes you forget what, what font you used, yeah. uh, which happened to me quite a bit. Font shift O. Let's get up in here, lock those in place. Now you can sort of, oh, if you can hear the clicking of my dog, he's up for an afternoon snack for sure. <laughs> Uh, this here is a little bit strange, so maybe just having a look at editing this, this a little bit. So you have the choice of either making rock smaller or glam bigger. So I'm going to get rid of a little bit of the C. Making sure it's still reading as a C though. We yeah. want to get some sort of alignment here. We've got it like that. If we had more time, we would play with other letters to slightly extend out and slightly um, make smaller, but that's okay. We can just use yeah. what we have now. It's cool. Going that to the back. Go what? Let's bring in our shoes. I might group this so I don't accidentally lose them. All right. Well, so let's make it big and bold and extend it. And we're sort of planning out what our cover would be. Oh, that's so cool. Now I think like we have some room to play here in terms of layers. Mm hmm. So maybe just sending this guy back and having the boot pop through. I love I love playing with depth like like you're doing. Yeah, it's, just, it's fun. <laughs> Super simple. And did we do that with a little bit of time to spare? Is that are we okay? Yeah, we're we're about wrapping up. This is our last awesome. uh, ninety <laughs> seconds, and you nailed it. Oh my gosh! Right so on the dot. superb. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely nice. love it. You've done such a good job. That's great. Well, I mean, yeah. um, you know, I'll illustrate the rest of them and then tomorrow we'll get into the to the editorial and, and do some font matching and build out the actual magazine itself. How fun. Yeah, this is definitely, this stream's definitely worth a rewatch. You did a lot in a short amount of time and man, you're again, your your time management and everything is spot on. So thank you so much. <laughs> you're so good. Thank you. I've learned a ton from you. I'm I'm so thankful that you are here. Shanti mm -hmm. Sparrow, everybody, is amazing. Just kind of remind I'll probably leave everybody with the schedule yeah. here as you can see it. Uh, but uh, again, shout out to uh, you, Shanti, for just being amazing. And I'm glad we have you tomorrow as yeah. well. <laughs> I'll be so excited to be back. Yeah, it's be great. So uh, tell everybody, tell her thank you. See lots of love, love, love in there. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you as well. Oh. Stay healthy, everyone. Stay positive. Give somebody a virtual hug by telling them that their hair looks really good or something. I don't know. And their, their boots are amazing. And their boots are amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Shanti. Uh, leave you with the schedule, Thanks, Paul. guys. And we will see you tomorrow. But stay on the line. Thank you, everyone. Bye.